The problem with beans in the Instant Pot is the guesswork. To soak or not to soak? How long to cook them? How much water do you need? What is the difference between bean time ratios? I feel ya, and we're gonna cover all of that in this video. So when I first got an Instant Pot, I was so excited, especially for cooking beans, but the reality did not live up to the hype for me because anytime I followed a recipe or I made them in the Instant Pot, they were just dry, hard, tasteless, and bland. And that was not what I was going for. So with a lot of experimentation, I kind of feel like I've come up with a fantastic blueprint and what I feel like works for most beans. And I'm also gonna share three recipes of the beans that me and my family eat the most. Two of them are really simple, completely hands off. And the third one is a little bit fancier, but so delicious. I get so many compliments on these beans and my son eats them like they're water. So before we get into the recipes, I'm just gonna share with you why beans are such an important staple on a whole food plant-based diet and something you want to include, what the benefits are of choosing dried beans over canned beans, most importantly, what kind of recipes can you use beans in. I'm gonna share the ratio that I've landed on that give the most delicious, tasteful, and perfectly textured beans, whether soaking really makes a difference or not, and how to store them so it makes your life even easier. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna share the place that I buy my dried beans from and I found to be the most cost-effective and high quality. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that beans are a major staple on a whole food plant-based vegan diet. And why is this? Because they're loaded with fiber. They're fantastic for your gut bacteria. They have anti-cancer phytonutrients in them. They're great for weight loss because they help you stay fuller longer while you're still in a slight calorie deficit, which is what you need to lose weight. And if you look at all the cultures of the longest living people in the world, every single culture includes beans in its diet. Canned beans from the grocery store are super convenient, and of course I still use those on occasion, but dried beans have some major benefits to them. Dried beans are also cheaper than canned beans. You get way more bang for your buck when you buy dried. One pound of dried beans will usually cost under $2, and it yields 12 half cup servings. Conversely, a 15 ounce can of beans will cost you the same or more these days, and yield only three and a half servings. So it's a huge saving. So if the world is going down and you've got nothing else and you can't leave your house, Beans are always something that you can eat and store. And my last reason for buying dried over canned is because there's a lot more variety available. If you're not a bean person and you're like, okay, I get it, I need to have these in my, my diet, but what do I eat them with? What do I put them with? Some really simple examples would be to put them in salad. This will bulk up your salad so you stay fuller longer. And if a salad doesn't ever feel like a full meal to you, beans will provide a little bit of comfort and satiation and just help you stay fuller longer. You can make bean dips like a black bean dip or or hummus dip. The hummus in my Eating Whole cookbook is my family's favorite. It is so delicious, so rich. It's oil-free and it is leveled up. I'm telling you, it's leveled up when you make the chickpeas the way I'm going to show you a little later in this video. Beans are great in burritos, which is something that we have around here all the time. You can use them as taco meat. You can also do things like chili. Really, you can use beans in almost every single recipe that you would have on a daily basis just to add a new texture and flavor and you won't get bored with them. One of the most important things with the Instant Pot and the place where I was screwing up all the time is that ratio of water to bean. So the ratio that I've found to work with most beans is one cup of dried beans and four cups of water and one teaspoon of salt. Now, with that being said, that will make a basic bean in the Instant Pot that will work for pretty much every kind of bean that you could think of, and you can kind of go from there. The recipes I'm gonna share with you in this video, take it up the next notch, but don't take up the hard work in any way, and they make them even more delicious. In a perfect world, I know that we would all remember the night before to soak our beans for the next coming dinner, but I understand that doesn't always happen. So when I can, I like to soak my beans, if I remember, and when I don't have the time or I've decided to make beans spur of the moment, I've also found that they work totally fine not soaking them in the Instant Pot. So let's talk about the benefits of soaking your beans. One tip that I share with my nutrition clients and I always get great feedback and appreciation from is that soaking your beans will make it easier if beans are something that is hard for you to digest and they make you feel super gassy and farty. Soaking these beans, if that is you, is going to be so very helpful. When you soak them at eight to 12 hours or even overnight, the cook time when you finally do put them in, in the Instant Pot is going to be shorter. And that is always very nice because you get your dinner faster. Another plus of soaking beans is that they'll give you a much more even texture. Sometimes if you cook the beans in the Instant Pot, although they taste fine without soaking, you'll get a little bit uneven texture. So when you have the chance, I would definitely soak. Now let's talk about storing the beans. Once you've cooked your beans, you can store 
store them in a glass container with a lid and I find that they last in my fridge for about five to seven days. My best tip for freezing beans would be to store them in glass containers with a lid that hold about one to two cups of beans. That way you can just pull them out of your freezer when you need them to use in different recipes and you're not gonna have to defrost a giant pot of beans. Now I'm gonna show you three recipes that I eat all of the time. We're gonna do a kidney bean, chickpeas. The last recipe I'll share are Cuban black beans. And this is a recipe that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, my mom, my grandmother were born in Cuba. I love these Cuban black beans, they're so delicious. I've adapted it from my family's version of Cuban black beans, which typically contain a ham bone or bacon or something along those lines. And we together adapted it to a vegan version that is just delicious and something that we eat in my house all the time. Okay, so for these recipes, I have soaked all of the beans the night before, so I'm just rinsing them and draining them one last time. For the chickpeas, I've got one cup of soaked chickpeas, I've got half of an onion, one teaspoon of salt, a bay leaf, and I'm adding four cups of water. And with this recipe, I'm using that super basic blueprint I mentioned earlier in the video. Because I've soaked these before, I'm gonna pressure cook these on high for about 17 minutes. Hang tight for a little chart to reference. So once they've cooked for the 17 minutes let it natural release for 15 minutes I sent a message and maybe you didn't get it yet when you have a second you should check it's where you won't regret it discard the onion chunks believe me it makes it much easier and then I'm reserving probably about um, half a cup or so of the bean broth then put the beans through the colander and then you're going to put them in a glass container with a lid I like a mason jar with a lid and then I'm putting a little bit more of that bean broth back in just so they stay flavorful and they don't dry out in the fridge or the freezer. This mason jar holds two cups, so I'm gonna pop these in the freezer for later use. Typically weekly, I make my hummus from eating whole. It's so delicious. Now hit pause and take a screenshot of this because this is my guide to how long to cook beans in an instant pot. Here are these deliciously simple kidney beans. These have been soaked and drained and rinsed. I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of salt, and I'll tell you why in a sec, one bay leaf, and four cups of vegetable broth. So the reason my ratio is slightly off here is because my vegetable broth is a little on the salty side and I don't want my beans to be too salty. I'm cooking these for 15 minutes and here is a little guide for you to just check out when it comes to kidney beans. Pressure cook on high for 15 minutes and then natural release for 15 minutes. Same story as the chickpeas, you're going to take the beans out, reserve a little bean water, strain the rest that you don't need. Typically what I make with kidney beans is African peanut stew. I'll link this recipe down below. It is one of my absolute favorites and I know you guys like it too, so try it out if you haven't. Last but not least, these are these Cuban black beans and I'm making a big batch. I've got two cups of soaked black beans. I'm using a tablespoon of white vinegar, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter teaspoon of cumin, a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, one tablespoon of either raw sugar or monk fruit sweetener or coconut sugar, half of an onion diced, two garlic cloves diced, half of a bell pepper, I did red here, but more authentic would be a green, and one bay leaf. Then I'm adding in four cups of water. I'm stirring this around just to make sure everything is evenly coated, and I'm going to go ahead and cook this on high for about 20 minutes. Now with these times, if you're going to cook something like a chili, for example, you wanna use the shorter cook time because then you're gonna be adding it to a recipe and cooking it further down the line. These are so delicious, you can have them as a soup, you can eat them with nachos. I'm serving them here with the queso dip from my cookbook eating hole, as well as the restaurant style pico, which I will link down below. Storing these in a glass jar with a lid with some of the liquid inside to retain the flavor. The recipe that I'm gonna recommend to you guys to try out are these purple sweet potato nachos that do have the black beans in them, and I'll link this recipe down below.
as promised, I'm gonna share with you now where I get my dried beans. You can check out the link down in the description where I've got it linked to my Amazon storefront. I buy these in bulk, which may be a little bit more expensive up front. However, it's such a cost savings, even compared to what you could get in like a bulk store, like at a Whole Foods or something like that. Um, also a great thing to have around in case there is some kind of unforeseen emergency, you know that you always have some food that you can eat. You can also take a look in my Amazon storefront for other products that I enjoy using. And also my hard copy of my book is sold on Amazon, which has like a ton of bean recipes. And I've got so many delicious, healthy, whole food plant-based recipes that you can incorporate into your life to start feeling better, looking better, and just feeling well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'm wishing you all the health, and I'll see you next time. Bye.